Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage three of Walter Catalonia. 176 kilometers, about 110 miles in length, but three categorized climbs. And the last one's a monster at over 18 kilometers long and just about 7%. The last pitches, though, are going to go way up the last seven kilometers as we start getting into the switchbacks. Again, like yesterday, stage two, where we saw Tade Pagacha light everyone up and solo the stage to gain about a minute and 20 on Mikhail Landa from Suit Up Quick Step. Now, if you're coming into the stage three after the beating from yesterday, stage two, if I'm racing Tade Pagacha against him, I'm saying we attack them wherever we can. That's not the steepest and final seven kilometers of today's race. You just don't want to attack when you get to the finish of today's stage. Anywhere else is okay. When the cameras come on, it's 50 kilometers to go, and they're on the second HC categorized climb here of stage three, and the field looks like it's been blown up. There's about 80, 90 riders in this front group. Visma, Lisa bike are on the front with Steven Kreiswick and with Tilla Walter sitting second wheel. Just behind them, you see UAE team members with four riders. That means two's missing. Groschartner and Doming Novak are both missing. That means the race was completely full gas throughout the whole stage, and the commentators told me when I flipped the screen on that there was a group of 10 that got caught and everything's back together with Visma Lisa bike on the front. That means, from my experience, when I'm looking at it, this race was full gas from the start until 50 kilometers to go while we watched the cameras coming on with Visma Lisa bike pulling on the front. Now, the next thing that's popping in my head, what are you guys doing on the front Visma Lisa bike? Makes no sense right now. Everything's back together. You want brakes going up the road. Hopefully somebody is in the brake going up the road. That's a threat on general classification of one, of, sorry, no one's at one minute, but two minutes or further back. Hopefully somebody's close. So UAE team members have to ride on the front. If you can't get somebody a threat up there on the, up in the breakaway and attacking, then you want at least to have a teammate in there that could possibly climb to the summit of today's race and win the stage. Because the ideal that you're going into this stage three of Vuelta Catalonia and you're going to drop the Slovenian Tade Pogacar, who went 81 kilometers solo at Strada Bianchi, who lit up Milan San Remo. And if you forgot those two races, he almost won here at stage one. He did solo at stage two. And so the ideal that you're going to drop Tade Pogacar on the last eight, seven kilometers of today's stage three just means you're a knucklehead. Well, Visma Lisa bikes on the front, they must be knuckleheads is what I'm thinking because they're not attacking left and right Tade Pogacar, who's down to just three teammates and himself at the front of this group here on stage three. We start looking at the peloton, like I said, about 80 guys going up over the top of the KOM and we see Tejada up there get maximum KOM points from Astana. He gives a little wave over there to Steven Kreiswick, a little thank you, and Steven Kreiswick keeps riding on the front. But let's back the film up just a little bit to two kilometers to go before the summit of this climb, and let's look at this 25 rider group back here. In this group, we see Bach Molema. <laughs> I'm already thinking, man, Bach Mullum, I really feel sorry for you. Look at all the bottles he's carrying. It's 25 guys. They passed the cars. They pulled the cars back. And that's why Bach Mullum has so many bottles. He got dropped somewhere. They're coming back with bottles so that he can give them to his teammates that are up here in this front group, such as Juan, Juan uh, Pedro Lopez. So with Mullum back there carrying bottles all over, look at him struggling on the pedals. And when we look at the group, what I really want you to pay attention, I want you to feel sorry for Buck Mullaba, but I want you to pay attention to the pseudo quick step riders. There's two of them in this group back there. One is James Knox, a climber, and the other one is also another climber there because that's Mari Van Saven up there. But up front, they have three pseudo quick step riders in the front, and I'll cover those guys really quick. In this group of 25, there's also on the back one Visma Lisa bike, and that's Robert Hessig. So when we go up to the front and I see Steven Kreiswick pulling Tade Pogacar's whole UAE team Emirates, that's why I'm calling them knuckleheads. They're going to go over the top of the climb and then we're going to see Sudo quick step quickly become the next knuckleheads here on stage three of Walter Catalonia as we see Billy LeSurf up there going full gas on the descent with that group of 25 about 15 seconds back there that he's got two teammates in. Now, if we let that group of 25 come back, the group, the peloton becomes about 100 riders, and they got five teammates in here that attack Tade Pogacar all the way down the descent, or you hit the bottom of the hill there, you attack up the road, maybe you get a GC threat, and UAE Team Emirates have to start pulling on the front with Solaire, 
or with Sivakov a little bit earlier than the final and last climb here of stage three. Instead, Le Cerf is blowing it up. Guys, he is dropping down this descent with massive amounts of speed, and he's getting a little help as we get further down the climb from UAE team member at Sivakov there. The group back there that had Bakmolama with all the bottles, they're not going to get back on. So Bakmolama will not be dehydrated at the end of today's stage because he's got plenty of water in his pockets and in his jersey. Feel sorry for your little tear right here. But the group up front's coming into 20 kilometers to go. We'll see Bora Hansgrove take the sprint comp competition here with nobody battling him. And then with 18 and a half kilometers thereabout, there's a hard right turn that's going to start to climb proper. Once the climb starts proper, we see Sivakov, the first UAE team Emirates in this group of four up here from them, that gets dropped off first. That means Tade Pogacar is down to two teammates right now. We're talking Soler and Almeida. Almeida's riding the front. When I'm sitting on the Chesterfield, I'm like, man, you got Almeida riding on the front before Soler? Then we see the first attack here on the last and final climb of stage three. That's Escatel Escadis, De La Part there that's throwing an attack. With that attack, the camera goes back to the peloton, and we see Sudol quick steps on the front with Billy LeSurf there going full gas. Now, he is a knucklehead. Knucklehead for pulling down the descent because his two teammates couldn't get back on, and there are no UAE Team Emirates riders in that back group anyway, so there's no way that Tade Pogacar was going to get any help if those groups came together. LeSurf's going full gas. He's got the peloton strung out here. It's still sizable of about 30 riders here, but you start seeing guys really suffering at the back because the next rider to go out the back, that's going to be Mark Solaire. Solaire's going out the back. Garrett Thomas is going to go out the back while Le Cerf is still on the front pulling full gas. And Le Cerf's going to go all the way into about 13.5 kilometers to go. Once he drops off the front, he's going to give thumbs up to the camera. Thumbs up to the camera? You are a knucklehead. Whoever told Le Cerf he's only 21 years of age to ride the front is the true knucklehead. But when you're giving the thumbs up for pulling Tade Pogacar up the last and final climb here of an HC categorized climb all the way into 13.5 kilometers to go, the Slovenian can almost solo from this point if he wants to, but he doesn't have to because Pseudo Quick Step's still on the front, but this time the guy's name is Jan Hertz. Hertz is pulling full gas. Everything is strung out back there and riders are getting dropped all over the place. EF, as, EF Educations, Esteban Chavez comes off the back with something about 13 kilometers to go, maybe 12. He's struggling big time. He's fighting tooth and nail to get himself back up to the group and he'll catch back on with about a K and a half after he got dropped. Now, they're going full gas. Jan Hertz is throwing everything into it. I want to point something out for the young pros though they're going over the race. If you look at Jan Hertz, he's got his jersey unzipped. Take a look at his teammate back there, his race leader for pseudo quick step. That's Landa. He's got his jersey unzipped. That's because they're hot. Why are they hot? They're wearing an undershirt. Why are you guys wearing an undershirt on a summit finish here at Walta, Catalonia? Cycling clothes are the most highly effective clothing for keeping you dry, keeping you aerodynamic, and when you stay dry, you stay cool. When you put the undershirt on, I'll agree with you. It's super comfortable with an undershirt on when it's chillier out, but it's not comfortable when it gets hot and you're just carrying more weight and that material because it is so much more comfortable than your jersey, it doesn't dry as good as the actual cycling jersey itself. So when you see guys going up the last and final climb with their jersey unzipped, remember, cycling clothes are made to be as aerodynamic as they possibly can. Most of the guys going up this climb right now are wearing skin suits even, and once you have your jersey unzipped, like we see Landa and we see Jan Hertz on the front of this peloton right now, it's catching wind and you got a wind drag. Now, underneath the jersey with that undershirt, it's going to make you hot. So now you're overheating and it's going to stay wet, which is going to make you even more hot and it's going to carry more weight. Just the jersey itself adds weight, but then the weight of the sweat too. It's multiplying all over the place, but Jan Hertz decided to go with it and he's full gas at the front of the peloton. And it looks impressive because he's got the group strung out. As I told you, guys were coming out the back left and right, and Jan Hertz is going to pull all the way into about 7.5 kilometers to go as we come into this left. Mikhail Landa, pseudo quick step, their race leader throws an attack, and Tade Pogacar is all over it at 7.4 kilometers to go. Now look at the Slovenian, directly up onto Mikhail Landa's wheel at 7.4 kilometers, over to the right and attacking Mikhail Landa at 7.4 kilometers to go, in front of Mikhail Landa and trying to drop him at 7.4 kilometers to go. So the Slovenian right now, if I'm being picky, this is kind of like splitting hairs, 
But if I'm Tadej Pogacar, I might have left Mikhail Landa up there for maybe 100 meters or 200 meters longer than he did instead of just passing them all within 100 meters. Because then if you wait just the next 100 meters, you can see how good Mikhail Landa is and then just light him up. Because I mean, if you, they're going to ride in front of you throw up this whole climb like they did with Le Cerf and Jan Hertz because they're knuckleheads and Mikhail Landa is going to be the first to attack Tadej Pogacar like a knucklehead from the front while while he's sitting on your wheel, you might just give him a little bit longer, another 100 meters, and then attack Batate Pagacha, lights him up, gets a little gap. As we see, Mikel Landa suffering to try to hold it right there with Tade Pagacha. Mikel Landa looked back over his shoulder, and this is the warning sign saying that his legs are at maximum because he's looking back for some help, but nothing's coming out of the group of favorites back there just yet. Tade Pagacha gets a little gap of about six seconds on Mikel Landa. Then we look back at the GC favorites. Who's coming out of there like a bullet? Sepp Kuss, the American Flying Eagle for Visma Lisa bike. He looks like he's got some form today because he bridges across the Mikel Landa wickedly fast and goes straight to the front and starts pulling Mikhail Landa. The gap up there, the Tade Pogacar, is at about 10-15 seconds and it looks like Tade Pogacar is either measuring his efforts or possibly not that spectacular today. So with that in mind, we see Landa taking some pulls along with Sepp Kuss as the gap just keeps stretching out a little bit there to Tade Pogacar. Now I know Tadej Pogacar knows that he's got himself a 1 minute and 30 second gap on everyone before today's stage 3 started. So he might just be monitoring the effort he's putting into his legs. And if he sees that gap come back, come start to come down, he might just accelerate again. But instead, the gap starts to go out. And once we get into about 5.5 kilometers to go, that's when we see that Tadej Pogacar breaks the leash and the gap goes over 20 seconds. When you see that, you know the Slovenian's on form. And Sepp Kuss is starting to struggle along with Mikel Landa as the gap is extending out to Tadej Pogacar. Now, we're going into about four kilometers to go, and we'll see coming out of the group back there, well, that's Hopper. Hopper's going to come out of the group, and he's going to bridge up to Sepp Kuss and Landa. Once he gets up there, we got three guys chasing one Tadej Pogacar, and when we look back at the peloton back there of GC favorites, it's Bora Hans girl on the front. That's Sergio Aguita riding in the front, and he's been doing a spectacular job since the attack at 7.4 kilometers to go from Mikel Landa. Sergio Aguita's still been riding on the front. He's going to ride all all the way up to 3.5 kilometers to go, then Sergio Guita is going to blow. Then we're going to see Movistar get on the front. Now, if I back the film up just a little bit to six kilometers to go, we saw Almeida come off the back, and he came off the back along with movie stars Nairo Quintana and Agon Bernal from Team Enos. The Colombian struggling there with Almeida at six kilometers to go. Now, we forward back up to three kilometers to go. We see Sepp Kuss. Sepp Kuss is starting to suffer. He's coming off the wheel there of Mikel Landa and Hoppe. And then Hopper, directly after Sepp Kuss starts to gap, he starts looking back over his shoulder because Landa's putting in an acceleration at just around three kilometers to go, trying to do some damage on the GC favorites behind so he can at least get himself a podium here on stage three and possibly a podium on the general classification. Tadej Bogacar's gap is starting to extend. It's always going up. He's up to 30, 40 seconds now on Mikhail Landa. Sepp Kuss and Hopper are going to get caught with about 1.4 kilometers to go. And then Enric Moss is going to throw in attack. So we got Tade Pogacar going solo. Landa, who's just in front, about 20 seconds of the attack there from Enric Moss, Movistar. Then we're going to see Vlasov attack out of the group on the right side from the helicopter angle. It's hard to see it's him, but trust me, it is. As Vlasov's throwing an attack, the group covers that move right away. And then Vlasov is sitting on the front, setting tempo, trying to bring back Enric Moss, who's still go trying to bring back Mikhail Landa. We see Tade Pogacar. It's 500 meters to go. We know the Slovenian's going to win. He takes it all the way into about 50 meters to go. He'll mess with his computer, shut, shut it off. Then he'll wipe his face so he looks good for the picture, wipe his nose. Then it's hands out wide as the Slovenian wins a second back-to-back -back mountain stage here at Walta, Catalonia. Behind, Mikhail Land is in the picture, but he's about a minute off the pace of Tadej Pogacar when he crosses the line. But look just behind Mikhail Landa before he crosses the line. Sepp Kuss, the American Flying Eagle, throwing in another tack. He's got two riders on his wheel. That's Bahrain Victorious right there. That's Tibieri and Walt Pools from Bahrain Victorious. As they're coming up to 75 meters to go, 
We know that up front, it was Tade Pogacar that won the stage and Mikel Landa who got second. But Tibieri's coming around Sepp Kuss to get himself a podium here on stage three of Walta Catalonia. As he comes around Sepp Kuss, he crosses the line for third on the stage here. Luckily, there's no cats in the neighborhood right now because Tibieri's going to be on the podium. Now, we look further back. His fourth on the stage is Walt Pool's fifth. Sepp Kuss that crossed the line all same time. They lost about 20 seconds there off of the time of Mikel Landa and who lost 50 seconds to Tade Pogacar. The group behind struggling. Everybody coming in in different groups. As we know, today's stage three was an explosive finish here. And we know Tade Pogacar still on form. Now, if I di dissect the race a little bit deeper, I would say with about two kilometers to go, Tade Pogacar looked like he might have actually been feeling the effects of today's stage three and yesterday's stage two win victory because he looks like he was suffering just a little bit. And when he crossed the line, he was certainly breathing hard. In his interview, he said basically about the same thing, that he started to feel the effects of the altitude somewhere around two kilometers to go, so we know that being true. Now, when we look at GC and we look at the battle here, guys, it was ridiculous tactics. There's no reason for Visma Lisa bike to be pulling up that HC category second climb here on stage three when they could have been attacking. It was a little bit softer of a climb, so attacking UAE Team Emirates is still doable when it's slightly softer, and you could have had the two groups come together and then attack over the climb too, and maybe somewhere along that very short valley before they started the last and final climb with 18 kilometers to go. But once you get to 18 kilometers to go, you still have to keep attacking UAE Team Emirates because that part of the climb is still a bit softer, and we saw with Sivakov being dropped early in the climb at 18 kilometers to go, we saw with Solaire being dropped shortly after that with about 15 kilometers to go, so we know they were hurting, and we saw Almeida getting dropped at six kilometers to go when there's still eight, nine, 10 riders in front of Almeida as he's getting dropped, so they're not incredibly strong. Now, I might have missed something early in the race. Maybe those guys had to ride big time, and that's why we saw that, but if they did ride early in the race, it was still the time to attack them all the way before you got under eight kilometers to go, where we saw land attacking on the stiffest and hardest section here of the last and final climb of stage three. It's a knucklehead moves from pseudo quickstep and Visma Lisa bike. And when I look at UAE Team Emirates, all Tade Bogaccio had to do was follow all the way to 7.4 kilometers to go and then light up Mikel Landa. And you know nobody back there is fully chasing with help because we saw Sergio Gita was the only one riding for Bora Hansgro. And then we saw when he dropped with 3.5 kilometers to go, that is Rubio from Movistar that was riding for Enric Moss. So it's one guy chasing one guy all the way up this climb. You are not going to beat Tade Pogacar trying to chase him with just one guy. You need multiple riders all working together, but everybody here, like I said on yesterday's stage two, same scenario here on stage three, they're all racing for second on the stage and second on general classification. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Tomorrow, stage four should be a sprinter stage if Inos want to make it a sprinter because they have Ethan Hayter here, the only real sprinter in this group, along with Brian Cocard, maybe Kofidis. So if they're not in the front group, maybe Ineos will control the whole stage and try to have a stage win for Ethan Hayter. And of course, Kofidis might jump in because they have Brian Cocard if he's got any legs left after the last two mountain stages. Make sure you guys like and subscribe because tomorrow could be an exciting sprint finish or a day for the breakaway to go the whole day onto stage four and someone else to win other than Tade Pogacar. See you guys on the next edition real soon.